everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. From the book of Joshua... And I'm not going to try to preach my entire message. Joshua chapter number 2. But I'll preach a little bit of the beginning of it. Joshua chapter 2, when you have it, stand with me. I actually preached this in Oklahoma City. God gave it to me about five minutes before I went to the pulpit. And then I chewed on it after I preached it. And then I ended up preaching it in Cleburne, Texas. And uh, developed it a little bit more. And then I thought I was going to be done with it for a while. Very seldom do I preach a message, you know, two, three times in a row. But I guess every area needs this. I guess every area needs this. Chapter number 2 of Joshua and verse number 1. And I think that's all I'm going to read this morning. Maybe that will saddle me in if I only read a little bit. But Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men spies secretly, saying, Go and view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. I think I'll stop right there. Amen. For good reading, read the rest of the chapter today. Amen. It's a powerful story there. How many are familiar with this story? Amen. Not everybody. See, Moses had passed away, and Joshua is now the leader of the children of Israel. A generation before this, God had did the, one of the most miraculous miracles the world had ever seen. Up until this point, he delivered the children of Egypt from the hand of Pharaoh and brought them out. Forty years later, uh, we're picking up the rest of the story. It's a new generation. Someone say new generation. It's a new generation, and um, God's moving in this generation. And now we're picking up the story here. That they didn't cross the Red Sea, but they crossed the Jordan, and they're getting ready to go to the biggest city on the earth, the most structural city on the earth. It's called Jericho. I've had the privilege of actually being at Jericho. Have y'all been to Jericho? The ruins that are Jer at Jericho, it's one of the oldest. It's still a city. It's, it's classified as the oldest city on the earth. Uh, but there's a certain little place there that you can see where the original part of the, they think that was the original wall that came down. But this is where we're picking up this story. Now, I find it amazing here in verse number one, and I only chose verse number one. Maybe we'll get into more of it tonight. But verse number one, it said, Joshua sent out two spies. A generation before that, there was 12 spies sent, and they couldn't get the job done. If you know the story that a, a generation before, after seeing the miracles of the plagues, after seeing the miracles of the Red Sea, after seeing their enemies destroyed, the 12 that went out, all but two, said we are but grasshoppers in their eyes. My, my, my. I'm not here to beat up on anybody before me or anybody else out there. Amen. But there, sometimes if you're not careful, you'll surround yourself with people, amen, that they don't have a powerful faith. Amen. They, 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 they're under the guise of, of Christianity. They're under the guise, uh, you know, of the church. Amen. But well, they don't see things the way others see it. But there were two in that group that did, and their names was Joshua, who's been mentioned here, and Caleb. Amen. They didn't see things the way everybody else did, but because uh, the congregation chose to believe unbelief, 
God told them that they'd have to spend going around in circles for 40 years in the desert. And sometimes, I think what's been going on in the United States over the past 40 plus years, we've just been going around in circles. Amen. We're just going around in circles. Because we dare to believe. We still got people out there, the doubters and the naysayers, uh, people that don't know their history books, that don't think that this country wasn't founded on God, that don't think that this country wasn't founded on the Bible and the Bible principles. Uh, and, and, And we're going around in circles. But there was two this time. Now, the Bible calls them, and rightfully so, because the Bible's never wrong. The Bible says, two men to spy secretly. Now, notice in the wording of that, two men to spy secretly, these wasn't two men that were hiding uh, and in disguise. There's a big difference. They were stealth. They were agents. I kind of like to think they were kind of like James Bond. Uh huh. He didn't back. He didn't back down. I, I know there's some newer ones, some Born Identity and things like that. But I'm a, I'm a Bond man myself. In fact, my favorite one is uh, Sean Connery. He was my my. So I got an amen back here, huh? Uh, he he. he did Roger Moore was my second one. I'll oh, get off track. But them guys, though they were spies, uh, people like Bond, they were spies. They wasn't scared. You understand the difference? They wasn't walking around spies in the land, hiding, uh, covering themselves. Uh Uh-uh. No, in fact, if you read this out, it looks like they're coming through the land, and by the time they get to Jericho, all the land and all Jericho is no something's up. Now, it wasn't the fact that they were bad spies. They just didn't care whether you knew. We're coming whether you like it or not. Vince Lombardi, who I believe one of the best football coaches that have ever coached the game, he run five plays. Okay? Sweep left, sweep right, uh, straight up the middle twice and one pass play. And he said, this is what we got here. We come, stop us. That's the way these two spies were. They, they, they wasn't like the generation before that was so enamored and so uh, scared by the situations. We need to get our eyes off of the situation and get our eyes on the one who sent us, the one that ordained us, the one that told us to go. These two spies uh, these two agents walk into the land, and they're not hiding themselves. They're not in. They're not in Jericho hardly any time at all. And it gets out to the king. Hey, we got two guys in here. They meant to do us harm. They're, they're with the children of Israel. And the king get all his guys together, and they start looking for them. And the first place that they go to look for them is where they're at. Now, this is the second part of the story that you need to get. They didn't run to the existing church of Jericho. They didn't hide under somebody that they felt would be kind to them. They went to Rahab's place. Everybody say Rahab. Amen. Now listen, I hope the little ones are downstairs. If not, hold your ears. She's a harlot. She's a harlot. And I'll just kind of tone it down for what I would do on a Sunday night. But you that are old enough to understand, that's not a good reputation. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't put that on your job resume, uh, your job resume, harlot. It ain't what you list, that, you know, when you're listing things, uh, you know, in the obituary, and they were a harlot. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. There is a reason that in the first verse that it mentions this. It came to the harlot's house named Rahab. This first verse, as you read this, it seems like you read this, it tells you almost the entire story 
in the first verse, and then there's a middle verse that does exactly the same thing. And I wonder why it was like that. As I, most, most stories are built chronologically, step upon step. But this story, they let you know right in the beginning, there's two spies. They're coming into town to take the town. And then it's Rahab's house that they end up to. They told, if you were watching the movie, the first scene tells you the plot of the movie. And they go into this house, and she's there. And the thing that the writer wants you to realize is she's a harlot. She's somebody that you would never pick to be the hero of the story. But I love it when God uses people that no one else picks. Amen. I love it when God takes people, amen, that society is written off. It's people that you would say, oh, I can't believe that. You know, every now and then I'll see somebody come and uh, it, it even blows my mind. Over the years, I've seen a lot of people come to the Lord and then God calls them into certain ministries or to do certain things. It just amazes me how God picks people. He picks people like harlots, and he picks people like me and you. Hello. Amen. I said he picks people like harlots, and he picks people like me and you. Now, listen, it, it, I mentioned our country. You know, in the founding of our country, in the history of our country, that first generation of our, uh, uh, under the, under the, um, Constitution and independence and that generation of the revolutionary, you look at some of them guys, they were scoundrels. John Hancock, they, they actually, the England said he was a pirate. There's just, there, uh, the, uh, the one that Paul Revere, hello. But let me tell you something, God's real good on taking folks that nobody else wants and using them. Now, before you say, well, God picks them, and he does, amen, the person that's being picked has something to say about that. Amen. I didn't go into the rest of the reading or anything like that, but I, I, I'm here to tell you, I believe there's a Rahab right outside of our doors. Amen. I believe there's Rahabs that are out there that are just like her. They're out there, and they're looking. What are they looking at? Well, first of all, they're looking at history and say, oh, yeah. I heard them stories of the Red Sea, how, how the mighty Egyptian army was drowned. I heard the, the stories of the ten plagues. We heard clear in that foreign land of Egypt what God had done. Then we heard how God brought them through the Red Sea. And how God kept that group of people for the last 40 years. You know, there's Rahabs out there. They're still looking at the church. Amen. Now, I, I agree with you. Uh, this, sometimes you would think, especially during this pandemic, hasn't been the church as great as our, at least the American church. Amen. We went and shut our doors and crawled underneath our beds. Amen. Pulled the blinds down and said, call us when it's all over. Whether you like it or not, you know it's the truth. Amen. You may not like to hear it. Amen. But there's Rahabs that are still looking in the church and say, oh, I remember. I've heard how that inside the church, amen, there, there's miracles. Amen. That early Pentecostal Assembly of God, Church of God, churches, how the power of God moved in the A.A. A. Allens and the Jack Coles and the Wall Roberts, even the Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, how they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's Rahabs out there saying, hey, I remember my grandmama talking about the power of God, old-time tent meetings, old-time revivals. Amen, where they just get on the street corners. And preach when the Salvation Army had salvation. And Rahab's looking at that, and then she's looking at the, just the everyday misery that she's living in. Listen, you don't have to, you don't, listen to me, you don't have to be a prophet to realize that this world's going to hell in a handbasket. Amen. If you're putting your, if you're, if you're hooking your wagon to this world system, you're in trouble. 
Even the world can see, man, something's about to give. I drove all the way to Texas and come back, and God will take care of me because I'm just passing through this place. Amen. No matter what the gas prices are, if God wants me someplace, I'll be there. Amen. But I'm just passing through. I'm not a citizen of this here world. I resign my citizenship of this world. Amen. I, I'm, a citizen, I'm a citizen of heaven. Amen. But there's a lot of people in this world that are out there, and they realize this thing is broke, and there's no president that's going to fix it. There's no senators that's going to fix it. Amen. There's no good group of people that's going to fix it. The we ain't going to fix it. Amen. Only God can fix it. Amen. And God's got different plans. Whew. I'm hurrying. I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. Amen. But... She looks and she says, what am I doing? I'm selling my body for a few pennies to survive. My family is living with me. and I'm the sole breadwinner, it looks like, and I'm selling my body to do it. And there's all kinds of sin and debauchery that's going on. I'm going to say something right here. I don't care if it makes you mad or not. Amen. They're pushing, they're pushing this here LGBT, whatever they call it now, this rainbow, this, that, and the other on us, trying to make it normal. They've been doing that since Rahab was on the earth. And what did happen to Jericho? It fell. She's looking around and she said, this ain't right. Y'all ain't going to like this, but it's not natural. It's just not natural. And she, she, she don't have Bible for this. She, don't, she doesn't understand why it's wrong, but she knows it's wrong. She's caught up in her lifestyle. There's addicts and people in their lifestyle. Amen. They don't know how they got there. It just kind of happened. That's all their life. You understand Rahab wasn't raised in a Sunday school. She didn't have a Jewish background. She didn't know what the laws and the Ten Commandments were. She didn't understand the tabernacle or anything like that. She was far from that. But there was a compass inside of her. Ooh, y'all listening? There was a compass inside of her that was saying there's got to be something more. That's why Brother Tom goes to the places he does. That's why I go to Kenya. That's why I go to Haiti. That's why I go to these places because there's somebody out there. They're listening for the, uh, the Macedonian call. And uh, study your Bible if you want to know what that is. I heard the Macedonian call. And Rahab is one of them. She looks around, and she sees, there ain't, this, this can't, it's not going to last. $5 a gallon gas is not going to last. $3 loaves of bread is not going to last. $4 for a gallon of milk. Keep on raising the inflation. It's not the answer. And Ray, now we're sitting in church, we're the children of Israel, the ones that have survived and come through the generation, and now we're on the other side. We know God's blessing us because we know Jesus is coming again. Amen. I believe in the rapture of the church. I have hope in all this mess. I've got hope in Jesus. Amen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But this ain't Rahab. She don't know none of this. She don't understand none of this. But she's hoping for an answer. And when she sees these two spies, these two agents of God, when she sees them, she hides them. You realize what kind of risk she was taking? But she kind of like old Fred Wynn preached about those old guys that was going to starve to death anyway. They might as well try something. She said, I'm going to try something. She takes them up and hides them. When the king comes, she lies to him. Someone said, oh, she lied. Well, she was a harlot. Don't get all bent out of shape because she lies. This is what harlots do. Amen. It's a shame when it creeps into the church. Well, I won't say that. 
Uh huh. She hides them, and after after the immediate risk is gone, she looks at them and she says, "Listen." Only thing I'm asking is that when you come into this city and you're going to come, remember my family. She doesn't even ask for herself. She feels like she's unworthy to ask for herself. Well, she wants her mom and dad. And she, wants her, she wants her aunts, uncles, or whoever that's an immediate family that's in that house. She said, when you come in, you take care of my family. You know, I've talked to street people out there, and they've got more What's the word? They've got more, even though they may be estranged from their family, they've got more compassion, more concern for their family than what church folks do sometimes. Amen. And she's out there and she said, take care of my family. And, and, and one, of the old, one of the old agents says, you take care of us, we'll take care of you. You don't tell on us, we're going to help you. Amen. And if you know the rest of the story, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. That's a whole different subject. Amen. They make a little deal. Said anybody that's in this house, because there's a scarlet rope on the window, we won't touch it. If you're outside of the scarlet rope, you're in trouble. But if you're inside this room, you're safe. You mean you ain't got to go take a class? You ain't got to take a membership? You don't have to join this? You don't have to join that? No, you just need to be covered by the blood. Yeah. Amen. You just need to be covered by the blood. You mean you don't have to take a Jewish conversion kit? Nope. Just covered by the blood. And Rahab made an agreement, and they made an agreement. They, they go on out. Uh, they, they escape to the mountains for three days. Then they go back and make their battle plans, and then there's seven days of marching around the wall. Listen, on those seven days of marching, could be a whole lot of things. There's a whole lot of talk going on. Some in her house might say, hey, why don't we get out? I mean, this don't make no sense. Why don't we run today? He said, Stay. Rahab didn't know what to do, but when he said, stay, stay. And when the walls came down, ladies and gentlemen, when the walls came down, Rahab was standing. Now, I'm going to finish this. When God, what God's getting ready to do right before the rapture of the church, right here, right now, there's Rahab's. They're in Martinsburg. They're in Berkeley Springs. They're in Hedgesville. They're in Inwood. Amen. There's Rahabs out there. They don't, they wasn't raised in Sunday school. They don't know the Bible. They don't know anything, but they can see. They've heard the stories of God, and they can see how a mess this world's in. And you know what they're waiting on? Somebody that's bold enough that'll come and tell them that God's on the way. Jesus is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming. Now, Rahab doesn't look like your church people. I guess there's a reason I'm preaching this short. Rahab doesn't look like church people. I'm going to say it one more time. Rahab doesn't look like church people. But God's got a reason to go after Rahab. By the way, some of you don't, that you look different. We look different right now. But there's been times we don't look like church people neither. Hello? God reaches out to Rahab, saves Rahab. If you allow me to put it this way, people that maybe they once was into LGBT. Hello? Amen. Maybe they all tatted up and pierced up and marked up. They've done so many things with their hair, and they're out there, and they look just as far got lost as can be. But God sees their heart. And not only is God coming for you, but he's coming for them. And do you know the rest of the story that God brings Rahab and saves Rahab? 
But if you read in those genealogies and the genealogy of Jesus Christ himself, do you know who's there at the top of the list? Miss Rahab. Amen. Because Rahab, after she gets after she gets saved from the walls coming down, she goes back and she finds herself a man. We don't know the story. We don't need to know the story. Amen. But he looks at her and he loves her. And, and they and they end up having a baby, and that baby has a baby, and that baby has a baby, and it gets down to Jesus. Because see, God loves Rahab as much as he loves the children of Israel. Would you stand with me? I said Rahab's out there someplace, and we got to reach them. There might be a Rahab right here this morning. Amen. You're, you're here not by mistake, but by design. And if you allow me, I'm one of those agents this morning that's telling you that the walls are going to come down. Everything around us is going to fail. If you're putting your hope in the government, if you're putting your hope in man, if you're putting your hope in yourself, it's going to fail. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to fail. But those that are covered by the blood, those that are on the right side of the scarlet rope, we're going to be saved. Those that have a covenant and a commitment with Jehovah, we're going to make it. Amen. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter what you look like, what you act like, where you've been, what you've done. Amen. I don't care what your background is. God wants to bless you and use you. He wants to rescue you and use you. This morning, this morning, I, I got two parts to this altar call. First of all, is there a Rahab in this house? You, you just know that this world cannot continue to go on the way it is. Your life is a mess. This world is a mess. It's just a mess. And you're tired of being in this mess, and you're tired of knowing that something's going to happen, and you're scared that something's going to happen. Are you here this morning? You don't have to live that away. One simple prayer can change that this morning. Amen. Is there a Rahab in this house? Now, notice it could be a male Rahab as far as this message is concerned. Is there a Rahab in this house with every head bowed? Amen. This is your morning. Amen. Uh, it, it, after hearing this message, if I wasn't right with God, I'd be coming up here. Amen. Hold my hand. And we're going to pray with you. We're going to make a covenant with the Father. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what God told Rahab. If you'll be on the right side of the blood, if you'll be on the right side, you'll be safe. If you're that Rahab this morning, I want you to come. While every head is bowed, I want you to come. Maybe you prayed in the past and because you've heard, but this morning you feel this tugging on your heart. I want you to come. Is there one? Amen. It's a great crowd today. Clear in the back. Is there one? You want to get things right with God? Oh, is there Rahab in this house this morning? I want to give you the first opportunity before we go on to the second part. Is there one? Hallelujah. Come on. I feel this in my heart. I feel there could be a Rahab right here, right now. Is there one? You want to change. You're tired. You realize this world can't continue. You're tired of being scared. You're tired at night laying in the bed, wondering what's going to happen next. Amen. I'm here to tell you when you've got the peace of Jesus, you don't, you don't lay like that anymore. Is there one? Mm, feel it in my heart. All right. You can come up at any time on the second part of this altar call too. Who in here then would say, I want to be an agent of God. I want to go get Rahab. Now, I want you to think about it before you. I really want you to pray. I, I don't just want this to be a motion. But I want to be the agent to go get Rahab. You realize you're putting your life at risk. You got to leave your family. 
They had to leave their family, go into a strange land to go get Rahab. But who in here, after me making it real plain, who here would like to go find Rahab and her family? If you want to be an agent of God and you want to find, take it seriously. You want to go find Rahab, I want you to slip out of your seat and line up across the front. We're going to pray for these agents this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. If you want to be an agent of God, maybe you made that commitment a long time ago. Amen. I'm seeing all these females coming. Amen. Are there any males that want to be an agent of God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Anyone else in the back? Hallelujah. You want to go reach Rahab? I don't know what that means. I don't know whether that will be taking you on a city street with a microphone whether that's going to be going having a house prayer meeting someplace. I don't know what that means, but you want to be an agent of God, not an agent of the world, but you want to be an agent of God. Hallelujah. I'm noticing older folks. What about, do we got any young folks that want to reach people in the high schools and reach people in, the, in your category? Amen. Any agents of God? Woo, hallelujah. I want to be an agent. That's right. Come on, guys. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Anyone else want to get in on this? Amen. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18, six more than 12 disciples. Think what we can do. Now, you're making a serious commitment to God here this morning. Oh, Lord. Lord, the generation before us, and I say this respectfully, they went and they messed it up. They messed it up. I say it respectfully. I don't say that judgmentally. Just, but Lord, we want to do it the right way. We want to do it with boldness. We want to do it in the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you that are in the back, would you help us commission these agents to go? Oh, be a representation of the, of the body of Christ, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, for each one of these uh, that have come to the front. They've stepped out of their seat. They've made a public uh, display. They have stepped out publicly that they want to be an agent for you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray in your precious name, God. We've got people of all different types here, Lord. People that have all different groups that they can reach, Lord. Lord, but you will send them to Rahab. Lord, they're going to have to go through the land. Lord, they're going to have to get into the city that's wicked to reach Rahab. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that these agents that have declared here that they're going to do this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you that are here, I'm not going to do nothing fancy. I don't have no big declarations. I declare, I declare. I just want you to say yes this morning. Just say yes this morning. Lord, I say yes to being an agent of God. Lord, in your name, God. Lord, each one of these that are here, God. Lord, would you send them to the Rahab? Lord, start opening the doors. Lord, even more than one Rahab. Lord, send them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the places they didn't realize, Lord, they say yes. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I say yes. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. If you said that and mean it, I believe God's commissioned you. Hallelujah that God's commissioned you. In the name of Jesus, I will reach Rahab. Oh, I will reach her. I know it will be difficult, but I will reach her in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen. Do you believe what you prayed? Amen. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. My heart's still tugging and pulling. If you're a Rahab, amen. You're a Rahab, you're watching or you're here this morning, amen. We want to pray for you. You don't have to stay in your mess, amen. You don't have to stay in your mess, amen. All hearts clear here. Does anybody need any special prayer healing? Anybody need any special prayer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He wants to quit tobacco. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, the Holy Ghost can give him power to overcome tobacco. Lord, in any other addictive thing that tries to get into his body, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, God. Oh, God, I pray for him. The enemy has fought him. Lord, this is a Rahab right now. Lord, but you're going to put her in uh, put her in your lineage, Lord. You're going to put him in the lineage, Lord. Lord, Jesus. Lord, we rebuke this uh, tobacco in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that the next time he tries it, that he gets sick from it. Lord, that the very smell of it makes him nauseous, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and I, I, for everything you take, Lord, you replace God. Lord, I pray, God, you replace it with one of the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. Lord, replace it, Lord, with joy, unspeakable love. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give him a hunger for the Word of God. Give him a hunger for worship, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Next time you try to go, want to go after that, say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else need special prayer? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Lord, you see her heart's desire, Lord. Lord, she wants to have a stronger prayer life. Lord, she wants to understand and comprehend what she reads in the written word of God. Lord, we know, Lord, that that is all through the teaching of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, that the Holy Spirit is what helps our prayer life. The Holy Spirit Spirit is what teaches us, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, for a fulfillment, Lord, of the Holy Ghost in her life, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, you fill her, Lord, with the Holy Ghost power, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, she's hungry. She wants to be used of you, Lord. Lord, bless her hands that have helped physically, Lord, in the food room. Lord, we pray, God, we bring that to your attention. Her heart's desire is to work for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fill her with Holy Ghost power, Lord. God, give her a fulfillment of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Fill her, God, with the Holy Ghost power. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, just keep on loving on him. Oh, he's going to do it in the name of Jesus. The heart of the righteous, study if the answer. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's wait on the Lord. I feel the Lord's moving in this house. Lord, if you're, oh, Lord, we pray, God. Lord, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to reach somebody. Oh, God, teach us how. Show us how. Lord, we just want to reach Rahab. Oh, we want to spread the love of Christ. Oh, not in our understanding. But in your understanding, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I feel this, church. I feel this. The first ones that came through to the line, they were all women. Amen. And I just feel like the Lord is wanting to move on the handmaidens of this group of people, of this church here this morning.
Hallelujah. Would you agree with me that God would pour his spirit out upon his handmaidens? Oh, Lord, give us Mary's and Martha's, Lord. The women of the early church, God, pour your spirit out like you did in the upper room, God, upon your handmaidens. Not just the ones that are standing here, but the ones that are represented in this body of believers, Lord. Pour your spirit out, as the song said this morning, Lord. Lord, pour it out upon your handmaidens. God, may they be like the woman at the well. Come see a man that told me all things. Lord, may they be like the those that was at the foot of the cross when everybody else was running. Lord, there were women that were there in your suffering, God. Lord, we pray that you would pour your spirit out as we lost a beautiful handmaiden this week and you called her to glory. God, would you pour that anointing out that she had upon these women here today day, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that the Sunday school teachers, uh, Lord, that there be speakers, Lord, that there would be Marthas, uh, Lord, that you would put, use these handmaidens, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel that, church. God's wanting to move that the church, that the work of God is going to become more important to you than anything else. Anything else than work, than anything else. It'll be the work of God more than any other club and more than any other, any other thing that you do, uh, even to your family. It, God will be first. You'll be a handmaiden of God in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. It's funny, we were praying about going to get in Rahab. It seems like Rahab's the one that's going to get. Hallelujah. Are there any other needs in this house? Hallelujah. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. Don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money, and we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tively. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.